Hi friends, do you know where I am? I'm actually in one of the spaces that we have at Trinity. I wonder if you recognize it. There's not a lot of pews, and there's a little piano back there, and we have some beautiful stained glass. Let me see if I can show you some of the stained glass. Yeah, we have beautiful stained glass on both sides. This is the chapel. If you've been to Trinity before, you've probably seen this space. If you've never been, then, you, then this is the chapel. This is a small little place that we use for small services or worship, service, worship gatherings, um, prayer services, things like that. Sometimes we even have uh, small weddings or funerals in this space. It's a beautiful space, just like the nave. It's much smaller and it's always pretty clean. Let me show you what the altar area looks like. So here's our altar. We have a beautiful old painting on each side and we have the little pipe organ. And if I back up, I can show you what it looks like from further away. Oh, what's that? It seems that there is a mess in the chapel and that doesn't really quite fit in. Let's see what's in there. Oh, it's my boots. Some water bottles that are empty, scissors, pens, my fishing net from last week. I'll confess, that's my mess. I left my mess right here in the church. I dumped out a bag and just left it right there. And it doesn't seem to really fit into the rest of the space, right? Because our space, the chapel, is always very clean and it looks really nice. But I left my mess right in the middle of it. And I should probably clean it up. If you were with me, I would ask you to help me clean the mess up, even though I made it. And I imagine, because you're all really helpful and kind people, that you might help me pick up the mess that I made. So I'm going to pick up my mess, and then I'm going to meet you back in a minute, okay? Hi, friends. Thank you for giving me a minute to clean up the mess that I made in the chapel. I'm sure many of you have messes at home that you need to always be cleaning up and working on, right? For me, my messes at home usually are like shoes or clothes that I leave in places or books and paperwork that I'm reading or working on or trying to get through. And I need to clean those things up and make sure that I put things where they belong, right? I'm sure you have stuffed animals and toys and probably if you're learning at home doing computer work, you probably have cords and batteries and things all over the place all the time. And sometimes we need to spend time working on the messes to pick them up. And usually we have to do those things on our own. We made the mess, we need to clean it up, right? We think those messes don't really belong in church. Just like we have messes that you can see, we also have messes that are inside of us. Sometimes those messes, the messy things in our lives, are feelings like sadness or that we're not good enough or that we made a lot of mistakes. Um, that we're not lovable sometimes. Those are the kinds of messes that are inside. So we can have the outside messes, we can see those, but we often think that on the inside we need to be perfect too. And what happens, and it's kind of a sad thing, we see beautiful spaces like the chapel or the nave at Trinity and we think that they're so beautiful that we also have to look perfect and be perfect and not have anything wrong in our lives because it won't fit into that to that space, right? But Jesus does something different. So we're going to read from the Bible. We're going to read from Mark chapter 1 verses 21 to 28 in a regular Bible. Or if you have your Spark Story Bible, we are going to find this story on page 254. So we're going to see what Jesus has to say about um, messes and messy people or surprising people. The story is called Teaching and Healing. Jesus was in the synagogue. He picked up a scroll and began to read out loud. Just then, a sick man sitting near Jesus began to shake. The sick man shouted at Jesus, and the crowd said to the man, Shh, quiet, silence, because the people did not care about the man. But Jesus did. Jesus stopped his teaching. He wanted the man to be well. Be still. He said to the sick man, be well. The sick man became peaceful and quit shaking. What is this? The people said in amazement. He even cures the sick. Because of this event, 
news of Jesus' power began to spread among the people. Now this story is a pretty cool one, and I think we can learn a lot of lessons from this. Sometimes when, back in the day, when we used to be able to go to churches um, whenever we were able to, we often feel like people are going to look at us and not treat us kindly, and sometimes that actually has happened. Maybe you've made noise and people have looked at you and gave you the, the squinty eyeball thing where they are judging you and wishing that you were quiet. Or maybe you've actually made a mess. Maybe you spilled something in church and it made some noise. I know that at Trinity, because of the way the space is designed, even if you drop a pen on the pew or on the floor, it sounds really loud. And sometimes we get embarrassed and we don't want to like cause a scene. But churches are for everybody. Churches are not just for the people who are put together and look perfect and act perfect all the time. And we know that's true because of this story right here. Jesus was in the synagogue, which was kind of like a church. A synagogue is where people who are Jewish go and worship and be together. And there was a man who was sick. Um, and in the regular Bible, we, we see that story as someone who had an unclean spirit. So think of like a mess on the inside, right? And the guy made noise and all the people around him looked at him and told him to be quiet and hush, be quiet, be silent. But that's not how Jesus treated that person, the person who was kind of messy and didn't quite fit in. Nope. Jesus loved that man. Jesus said, be well, be silent. And then the man was cured and better. So this story reminds us of a couple things. One, that each of us belongs and we don't have to be perfect. But also that instead of expecting that the church is full of clean things all the time, including us and perfect things that look put together, we are reminded that we don't need to be put together. And in fact, we are invited to bring our messes into the church with us to God. We bring our messes to God because we know that we can't always clean up everything on the inside of us by ourselves. We need help and we can rely on God and Jesus to help us. And we also get to belong to a community one of the awesome things about being a, a part of a church, a particular congregation, is that the community can help us when we need help. It's not all for people who have it put together all the time. We all need some help sometimes, and that's why we get to be a part of a community. So we can do good things together, even though we have messes. Despite the mess, we can do good work and we can live into the call that we are invited to live into with God's help. So let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus who loves us despite the mess that we make and despite the messiness that is inside of us. Help us to be brave and to bring our mess and to show people our messy lives so that you can do good work and help us to help other people who feel like they have too much of a mess to clean up. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, my friends. I will see you next week. And remember this week, whenever you see a mess, that it's okay, that you don't have to be perfect, that God loves you just the way you are, and that there are lots of people in the world who are willing and ready to help, and that that's what we get to do together. When things are messy, we can work together to clean things up. And we do that all the time. Whenever we decide to like be a part of a new organization, or to learn more about what's going on in the world, that's like cleaning up the mess. And that is the work that Jesus invites us to do together. So I hope you have a great rest of your week. Stay warm. I think it's going to get really cold this weekend. And be well. Goodbye, friends.